Gracious Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. So very grateful and thankful for the opportunity that you continue to give us to feast upon your word. We know that we're here because you are not finished with us. We know that you're here with us. We know our limitations, Lord. We just ask that we would not handle your word deceitfully, but that we might grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com, and we finished our study in uh, the Epistle to the Philippians, verse by verse, and so we're going to begin a new study in the first Epistle of John. So I want to take a, a few moments to thank you once again for following us through uh, with Philippians. Uh, I want to thank you for, for all of the support, the praying for the direction of this ministry. I want you to know that I pray for you all constantly. And it is my prayer that as we go into this first epistle of John that we won't finish it. Because we're looking for our Lord and Savior to return. But uh, if that turns out to be the case, if, then so be it. Uh, there's something interesting about uh, waiting for the Lord's return and being so immersed in His Word as we are. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. Uh, the Word of God teaches us, uh, instructs us, comforts us as we await. There's no better thing that we could be doing there's no better thing that we could be talking about than our lord and savior jesus christ because the focus is entirely uh, on him so uh, for quite some time i can't re recall exactly how how long but we went through philippians verse by verse and it worked out that we finished that and uh, uh, as many of you who follow this ministry know uh we don't believe in coincidences, we believe in providence. And so it was intended that we uh, finish Philippians. And I do believe that by the guiding and the direction of the Holy Spirit, uh, along with everyone's prayers, that we are where we need to be in the first epistle of John. Now, I could be saying a whole lot about what's going on in the world. Uh, current world events and my opinion on that and where I think we stand in relation to biblical prophecy, and I'm not going to do that right now. I do believe that there is every reason to hope for a September return, uh, that September and October are high, high watch days. Uh, I believe there's also evidence for the spring of 22, so we're going to continue on. And uh, as we get into the first epistle of John, I'll probably pause to do a rapture update. Uh, to give you our ideas on where I believe that we stand in relation to that. But in the meantime, I welcome you to this study, this new study in the first epistle of John. Uh, we saw the wonderful privilege of living for him in Philippians because we're his children and that our responsibilities are to believe him, to trust him, and to suffer for his sake. Those were gifts that were given to us, his people. That he's the one who's redeemed us and he's uh, the one that set us apart for himself. Uh, we saw that we were made, had been made the righteousness of God in Christ. We saw that in our study through Romans as well. And so we enter into a study of the first epistle of John. That's not the gospel of John, the first epistle of John. And though the author is, is uh, John, uh, the the human author is John. The author is the Holy Spirit. As I've pointed out in many other passages, we're not looking at the reasoning, the logic of John, uh, but we're looking at the, uh, the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit uh, wrote through the Apostle John. And that's important, I believe, as we go through any one of these studies. The author is the Holy Spirit, though without a doubt, John's the one who wrote it. John wrote it, and the Holy Spirit authored it, and that is critical to our understanding the book. We're looking at what the Holy Spirit led a man named John to write, and it begins, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, 
which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our eyes, our hands have handled of the word of life. That's one verse, and it's got a life of doctrine in it. In fact, I, I, I defy you to find any human author separate from the Word of God that's ever uh, so briefly and so brilliantly presented the thought that John has presented through the leading of the Holy Spirit in this first verse. And it's got a life of doctrine in it. The pronoun that, that he is here describing our Lord, obviously, who, who is the subject of the verb in the sentence, uh, the four verbs, in fact, that we're going to see in, in this one verse, uh, the, the pronoun here is describing our Lord. He's the subject of the, of the verb in the sentence. And when it's a nominative case, which in, in this case it is, it's, it's a pronoun that's usually the subject of the sentence, which also performs the action in that sentence, which in this case is we have heard. We have heard. Now that which was from the beginning, and that uh, obviously that reminds us of... Uh, of several other verses, one in Genesis and one in the Gospel of John. Now we know that in Genesis 1.1, you know, it says in the beginning God created, a that's a testimony to God creating everything. The uh, Gospel of John says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And we know that that speaks of the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ. But this says from the beginning, not in the beginning. So what does it mean from? What does it mean from the beginning? Because in the beginning means before anything was created, and since Christ Jesus was before anything was created, he's God. But here the Holy Spirit says from, from the beginning. And uh, I'm going to su just simply suggest that uh, I believe that the expression from the beginning is identical to in the beginning. I, I don't see any reason really for an argument based upon a preposition. Now, you don't have to agree with me. I believe, I believe that verse 1, however, is a testimony to the deity, uh, the deity of Christ, as well as his work in the lives of those who hear, see, and who have heard, seen, uh, and handled our Lord, which we have heard, that's, it's, take note in, in, the, in the text, take, please take note of the fact that this is a, a plural, we, the we is a plural, so we know it's not referring to just the Apostle John. Now, once again, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to argue doctrine based on whether or not a pronoun is plural or, or singular. I'm simply telling you what I think. You know, what's really important is what does the text say? And, and I happen to think that the we is not an editorial we, but the we is an indication of those who are actually witnesses of our Lord. And as we look close at the grammar of the four verbs in the verse, you may want to highlight those four verbs. I think it'd be a great idea if you did. The witness is very strong. We have heard. We have seen with the eyes. We have gazed upon. And, and I don't believe that the Holy Spirit is being redundant here. I don't think he's repeating himself. And I'll point that out, you know, why that is. And we have handled. We touched. We felt. We've handled. Therefore, John has to be including all of those because it's plural however many that there were during the time of Jesus' presence. Now, you can look at the from the beginning as being the from the beginning of Christ's uh, ministry or from the beginning uh, uh, being uh, denoting a, a particular period of time uh, in which Christ uh, arrived on the scene uh, during the time in which he made him, himself manifest. You could look at it that way. Uh, 
there were, uh, I mean, there were many. There were many during the time of Jesus' presence. I don't know how many saw him during the period of, of, of his ministry or the period of his life uh, where that God became flesh and dwelt among us, who, who heard, saw, gazed upon, and handled our Lord. I don't know how many that was, but it had to have been a lot. We're not, we're not looking at the 500 after his resurrection here. We're looking at, uh, uh, in the word we that, that John uses, I believe he's referring to every single one who, who saw him, heard, heard him, saw him, uh, uh, gazed upon him, and handled him. So I, I want to focus on those four particular verbs uh, in this first verse, uh, because I believe that we're going to see a lot of uh, in that. Who heard, saw, gazed upon, and handled our Lord. I'm looking at the original text. I'm looking at the meanings of these words. Uh, these, this is a. Uh, we have heard now, now I don't mind admitting this was a little bit tough okay for me because it was important that I look at the word meanings it was important I look at the grammar it was important that I look at that uh, the, the, the who, who the human author uh, uh, is here uh, It's, I think if you'll hang with this, and, we're, and we may be getting off to a rough start here with this, but if you'll hang with this, you'll find uh, something that I believe that at least it's worth, uh, worthy of, of consideration, serious consideration. Uh, we have heard. That's a perfect tense. We have seen with the eyes. That's a perfect tense. And we have gazed upon, or the word in the Greek is contemplated. That's an aorist tense. Now it changes to aorist tense, and we have handled aorist tense. So you've got two perfects and two aorists, okay? In these four verbs, the first two are perfect tense. The second two are aorist tense. And I've talked a lot in my videos about the difference between these tenses, but we'll, we'll, we'll go over that uh, quickly again here. Uh, to see or behold means perceive, to discern, literally, uh, as, or with the mind's eye. It's also used figuratively. Uh, and to gaze upon means to contemplate as a spectator, okay, to observe in a very intent way, you know, especially to interpret something or to grasp its significance, uh, to concentrate on it, to, to really see it so as to... Uh, to you know, where, where the, the result of that is a, is a significant influence. It has a, an enormous impact, in fact, on the believer. The uh, perfect tense, just to, just to quickly describe the, the difference, the perfect tense in the Greek says some action occurred in the past with the results of that action continuing on into the present. That's what the perfect tense means. The aorist tense, on the other hand, has no relationship to time. It just sees the action as a whole. God, it's done. It, you know, it's it's a done deal. Okay. And it's not going to repeat itself. It's not going to occur again. It happened once. It's aorist tense happened. Uh, uh, it's not saying it happened in the past or in the, happened in the pr present or the future. It's not has no relationship to time. It's just that it happened. It's a it's a once for all, uh, overall occurrence. You know, just one single occurrence. It's not going to repeat itself. Now that's the difference, and I think that brings out a lot of meaning in the text. Now I understand that that many of us are not, uh, you know, experts in Greek. I also understand that many of us are not really all that into going back to school here. But I want to remind you that, that you know, when we apply the, the, the disciplines that uh, should be applied to our study of the Word of God, we're going to get a whole lot more out of it. 
Uh, I have to be, I'm the first to admit that, that I'm, I'd, I'd be the last person that would want to, that wants to go back to school. But folks, studying this book is hard. And it it's not hard in the sense that that we can't follow certain rules, you know, which apply to it's hard in the sense that we do we, we just don't want to. We often don't want to. We, you know, there's better things to do than just spend hours upon hours, you know, in this book. And my argument's always been that, you know, we, it's kind of like you, we just get out of it what we put into it. If you don't want to spend much time in this book, then don't expect to see much uh, except what you read on the surface. These, these videos are intended to get a little m deeper than just skimming across the surface. I don't know what your translation says. See or behold, you know, it means perceive, discern you know, with the mind's eye, okay? Uh, but it's interesting that we're not looking at a redundancy here, okay? These words are different words. The word for see is a different word for gazed upon. Uh, gazed upon literally means contemplate or to contemplate. Uh, so... This, the aorist has no relationship to time. It views the action as a whole, something that's done, something that's not to be repeated. That which was from the beginning, the God-man, Jesus Christ, who we have heard, perfect tense. And, and folks, I'm not asking you to be grammatical experts. I mean, I'm surely not that. But our emotions do not interpret this verse. The Holy Spirit gave us words couched in grammar, and our responsibility is to study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed. Now, I am not suggesting that there's no physical reference to our Lord here in the first verse, but what I am suggesting is that the verse is saying much more than that. If we don't understand a little bit of grammar and a little bit of word meaning, then we can't communicate, okay? If, if you don't understand what I mean by the words that I use and the context in which I use them, you know, uh, well, uh, for example, my, my dad's turtle shell became my trunk. And if I said I put my tools in my trunk, somebody might think I was referring to a piece of lug luggage, which I'm not, you know, not the back of my car. You know, the problem with English, folks, is that it's, it's a dry, it's, it, is, it is derived from a combination of languages. English is a mutt language, okay? And when you're reading any translation in the English, that's what you're reading. Like, you know, the word ball has a, do, a half dozen or more meanings. You know, words are important. And that's all that we have from the Lord. He gave us words. You know, when you come to me, bring with you words, says the Lord. And so it's a perfect tense. What the text is clearly saying is John says, we heard it perfectly so that we at this moment understand it perfectly. That's what the word says. I want to kind of set this up for your thinking right up front before we go any further. Our testimony, folks, our witness today is no different than John's. We also hear, we also see, we also contemplate, or we, we contemplated, and I believe we also handled our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm just going to throw that out there for your thinking. And again, I'm not asking anybody to agree with me, but we do this by faith, okay? The same expressions are used of us as it relates to our lives of faith. They, they may not be precisely the same words, but the concept is the same. And it's important for us to realize also that Paul, what Paul said about here, he said uh, in 2 Corinthians 5.16, he said, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have, we have known Christ after the flesh. Now, wait, now. 
though we have known Christ after the flesh. And we know that what we're, we're reading here, we're looking at in the first verse, okay, of 1 John, is John is describing how that they come to know him after the flesh. Uh, do, do, do you get that? Okay. And Paul says that though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. So, but it doesn't change the fact that our witness is the same as John's and all of the rest, the plural of the word we there that saw and experienced our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the strength of John's testimony lies in the fact that many had come to know God in the flesh. That is, after the flesh. But that's not true of you and me. I mean, obviously. Okay? I mean, you know, you'd have to be here. Yet I want you to consider the fact that we too have a testimony. Okay? Now, the critic says that well, you know, John was likely 90 or, uh, or some will, will even say 100 years old, so he couldn't possibly remember all of this stuff. You know, kind of like maybe someone else in my, that, we, that we're familiar with nowadays that doesn't really remember much. But without going into that, the Holy Spirit says John has a perfect comprehension of this, okay, which we have seen. Perfect tense. We saw him completely with the result that at this moment it is as though we were right there, as though we're seeing him at, at this very moment. That's what the perfect tense says. Okay? And we did that with our eyes and our minds. We are physical witnesses to the incarnation of God Almighty as our kinsman redeemer, which we have gazed upon. That is contemplated, says the Greek. We've, we've seen him with our mind's eye, and we're still seeing him. Now we're contemplating him, or we have contemplated him. Aristides, that was done. I mean, uh, and there was a, a point in time in our lives in which we contemplated him, okay? And it's not something that we, that I'm, I'm suggesting that what we're seeing here in the word contemplate or the word uh, gazed upon, if you want to look at that word in the original text, that what we're looking at here is, is an action on their part, which was done. Once it was done, it was done. Okay. They didn't continue on all the rest of their lives contemplating who he was. That's what I'm saying. And the same is true of us. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. And so the Holy Spirit says John has a perfect comprehension of this. Okay. You know, it must have been an interesting experience uh, for the disciples. As, as we read the Gospels, we see how little at, at times that they actually comprehended what the Lord was saying. You know, and that, that used to bother me until I, until I suddenly realized it's, it's pretty much like us. We often fail to comprehend what our Lord says, but they contemplated it, and that's an aorist tense. When he says under the leading of the Holy Spirit that we have all contemplated the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, not perfect tense, okay, but aorist tense. When we were looking at him, he used a perfect, okay, but when we're gazing upon him, he used the aorist. It's simply a, a statement of fact okay now what the text is saying i believe is that we saw him completely with the result that at this moment it's as though we were right there as though we're seeing him right at this very moment and we and we did that okay we did that and uh with our mind's eye and folks that is the teaching of the holy spirit and you know we were told that he would lead us guide us into all truth you know, many, there's been many a times over the years I've thought, you know, how, you know, here you have Paul on the road to Damascus. Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, skilled in the law, you know, touching the law. He was blameless, okay? That, and, and that means as far as he was concerned, Paul was concerned, he had done everything that the law commanded. You know, and you can say, well, but that's impossible, you know, the, thou shalt love thy, the, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, strength. 
my neighbor is myself. You can say Paul couldn't possibly have done that. But you see, Paul took care of that in the Day of Atonement. You need to realize that the sin question, the sin issue, was settled on the Day of, Aton of Atonement. The only problem with that is, is if you were Paul, you had to repeat that once every year. And now we have the grand truth that Christ, with one sacrifice, perfected forever those whom he is setting apart. And, and Paul knew all the Old Testament scriptures. I'm sure he could have quoted the Torah, you know, by memory. And suddenly on the road to Damascus, Jesus Christ is revealed to Paul. And can, can you possibly imagine the shock, the dramatic mental change that occurred in Paul knowing that he was wounded for his transgressions, bear, uh, bruised for his iniquities, the chastisement of our peace upon him by his stripes. Paul was healed. He knew this. He knew these scriptures. And so now Paul suddenly realized what that meant, just as John and these others did. Knowing the Word in person. In the, in, the, in, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, and they met the Word in person. We know Him through the Word. No difference. What a fantastic change in John. Paul. You. Me. And our text is saying that they had all contemplated it. They did that perfectly so that at this moment, it's as though we're seeing him now. Aris tense. We did it. It has nothing to do with time. It's just that it was done. We contemplated it and our hands have handled. And this too is an aorist. We actually touched him. Okay. Many of you are familiar with Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Uh, Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself, handle me, handle me, handle me, okay, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and, bo and, and bones as ye have, as ye see me have. Turn over, turn to Acts chapter 17, and what you'll find there is that they, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Same word. It only, and that word only occurs four times. It literally means to feel after, to discover, to personally investigate. Okay, So the fact that they touched him, folks, is something more than just feeling by means of physical touch, okay? They, they, they touched him in the flesh, okay? But so do we touch him in the spirit. Aorist tense. They touched, they handled the word of life. We touched, handled the word of life. We felt after him. Uh, not to become his, but because we were all already his. We were his child. We, we belong to the family of God. Folks, what other religious system, for lack, lack of a better expression, I, I hate using it, uh, what other religious system do you know of who had a multiplicity of witnesses? Now, I'm, not just the 500 plus uh, believers that at once that you know uh, that saw him after he rose from the dead I'm talking about uh, all those that are included in the in this in this first verse here okay had to have been many but of all of those who came to hear see contemplate and touch the Lord. I think John is saying these were witnesses who didn't follow cunningly devised fables when they made known unto us Jesus Christ. And sadly, most of the, the people that I know, most of the people that you probably meet are following 
cunningly devised fables, people who actually ridicule the concept of righteousness based on faith, and instead they, they have faith, they place their faith in things that are just, well, plain foolish. How, how anybody, how anyone, uh, how can anyone put their faith in the God of chance? And I've had people say, well, I don't worship any God. Yeah, you do. You worship the God of chance. You, you say it happens by chance. The Holy Spirit has John right. We heard him. We beheld him. We contemplated him. We touched. We, we felt him. We mentally and spiritually contemplated him. We handled him as the word of life. We fully and completely realized God became incarnate in human flesh, that he might, as our kin kinsman redeemer, pay that, the price that we could never pay. He did that. And as a result of what he did, we stand before him spotless. This is, their, this is John's testimony. J not just John's, but, all, but the we, the plural there. This is their testimony. Why would it be any different than us? For us, in our case. The only difference is that we, nowadays we know no man according to the flesh. But as far as, as the reaction on the part of John and all the rest who, who, who met and saw and came to know the Lord in all of these, these four verb expressions in this verse, it is... I'm, this is, and I, again, I don't, I don't, I ask you to please don't just to believe something because I believe it, but I'm going to suggest that the temptation on our part is to pick this first, this, this verse up, st start reading here in first John, open, go to first John chapter one, verse one, start reading. And when you get to the end of the first verse, you just you put your Bible down and, and you say, wow, that must have been great. Wished I'd have been there. You know, we're looking, we, the temptation, folks, I, I'm trying to suggest to you that the, the, t the temptation on our part is to read this and automatically assume this doesn't have anything to do with us. Well, this is something that happened back then. And man, it would have been great to, to have been alive back then. And boy, they, 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 that, what a special, uh, what a special thing, you know, to actually meet the Lord in person. And, and a lot of Christians, I'm sure, would argue that, that man, that's, you know, they, they'd argue against me here. I mean, they'd say, man, that is, that's, yeah, that's, that was really incredible. Uh, they experienced something that we, would, we could never experience, okay? And that was special. I, I don't see John as boasting at all here. He's giving a testimony. He's giving a witness. But what I'm suggesting to you, dear people, okay, is that don't just pick this up and read this as though this has nothing to do with you. This, folks, this is not, this book is not a, 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 a history book, okay? Though it's, it contains history. It is not a scientific history textbook it's not a history lesson that we're looking at here okay this is not a history lesson okay it's not that we just go through verse one quickly well okay yeah i, I get the, i get the idea john is saying that you know we we heard him we saw him we 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 gazed upon him we we beheld him his glory and and we we touched him and you know he was a real uh, flesh and blood human being, but he was God in the flesh, the God man Jesus Christ. And this is our testimony. We're, we're, we're a witness to the fact that, that he really was the Messiah. And that's wonderful. If that's all you get out of, out of reading that, I'm, I praise God for that. But what I want to caution you against is, is separating yourself from the experience of John and all the rest of the we. That's what I'm trying to say here. Because sadly, most of the people you know are following something else. 
Folks, this is no theory, okay? This is backed up by the evidence of hundreds, if not thousands, of witnesses who saw him, touched him, heard him, who are, who are even today still giving us their testimony. They're, they're, even today, the witness, this testimony of who Christ was, that he was God in the flesh, the God-man Jesus Christ, the, 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 the Messiah who was to come. This, this is he. You know, and we only need two or three witnesses. Any court in the land would be happy with, with three witnesses. But we have countless witnesses, as well as the testimony of the Holy Spirit, concerning who Christ is and what he did, so that we might have life. Read, read the verse. Zoe, life, quality of life. The word of life. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning was the Word. We, we, and we heard, saw, contemplated, and handled our, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was from the beginning, and, and are bearing witness of this. And we're bearing witness for this for two reasons. Get this, okay? Don't miss me. The, the whole reason, he says, that we're bearing witness of this is he lists, the Holy Spirit lists two reasons. Two purposes. One is that we might have fellowship with God and one another and that our joy may be complete. In John 10, 27, uh, my sheep hear my voice. John says that, uh, that we heard him. That which was from the beginning, that which we have heard, the that, any of you Greek students out there will know that this is a personal pronoun. It's speaking of our Lord. And we, we, we can say with absolute confidence that we hear His voice. We have heard His voice. Well, we continue to hear His voice. In fact, that's, it's, 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 this is what's amazing about these tenses in, in the grammar, folks. We heard him, John says, perfect tense. We heard him with the results that the, that action of hearing him in the past has carries on over into the present. Okay. It's not, well, we heard him. That's it. We're not going to hear him anymore. You, you follow me. Okay. First John three, verse six, whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Okay. Now, now, you can't read that verse without and come away with it without saying that we have seen him, okay? Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him, okay? That's, but we have. We have seen him. There's a direct verse in 1 John 3 that says we've seen him, okay? Well, but I haven't seen him. Steve, have you seen him? I haven't seen him. Maybe you saw him. I haven't seen him. Folks, you've seen him. You've heard him. In Mark chapter 16, verse 14, Jesus rebuked the disciples. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had gazed upon, contemplated him after he had risen. Okay? Hebrews 12, 18, we have not come unto the mount that might be touched, okay, and that burned with fire. But we have touched him, folks. We have touched him because we have been brought to him by grace. We have touched him. We have handled him. Okay? We have handled him. If you don't think you've handled him, think again. Every time you pick up that book, you're handling him because he's the word. 1 Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on. Lay hold on eternal life. Okay. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Folks, do not read this as though, well, that's, that's great. Great. Happy for you, John. I'm glad you, you saw him and these others did. And boy, what an experience that was. Wished I could have been there. That'll never happen to me. Had to be something special about that. And, and folks, I'm, I'm here to tell you that uh, 
It's the same God who works in us. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Please continue to pray for my health and for the direction of this ministry. Thank you all so much for all of your kindness, your comments, your support. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.